you go. Hello, everyone. My name is Faith Swain, and I am Ojibwe. I am the granddaughter of Tom Molino First Nations from Bear Island Reservation. I'm also the Indigenous Youth Ambassador at GROW, and we are gathered here today on the traditional land of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. This land is protected by, this, by the Dish One Spoon Wampum Agreement. I'll now turn it over to Brian so we can start our cooking class. Thank you. Thank you, Faith, for um, acknowledging that and uh, your contribution today. Um, I'm happy to join GROW and bring Permaculture Live to you folks. Uh, Permaculture Live is a way of living, basically, which it represents earth care, people care, and future care. And doing these recipes with you folks is a part of that people care and future care and earth care. So we're going to start immediately because it's a long uh, recipe, but we're going to make Salisbury steak with some uh, mushroom gravy. I'm really excited. This is one of my favorite things to make. So uh, get ready to get your hands messy. So let's uh, start with a can of lentils. You'll need, if you have um, fresh cooked lentils, you're probably fine. You've already rinsed them, but what you'll do is uh, get two cups of already cooked lentils, strain and rinse them, and then we're going to put them into a mixing bowl. So you guys can go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to set my camera up. Okay. Try to set up all of my stuff for you folks so I can be as uh, efficient as possible. Okay. Is everybody, um, if you're wanting to participate, you can. If you're using canned lentils, uh, you can raise your hands. Um, otherwise, if you did cook lentils, let me know how that went because I've never done it with cooked lentils. So um, who did cook lentils? Did you do cooked lentils? Yeah, we got, we got Sandy with cooked lentils, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, they're good fun. for you. Yeah, they're, I mashed them. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. So I think it's gonna work. Yeah, I think so. it, it will for sure. It will. Yes, I I uh, I cooked that whole package, so I've got enough for for the next two months. You do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then once you've uh, strained, rinsed, or rinsed and drained your lentils, you're going to mash them up and. You're going to mash them to kind of like a, think of a meaty texture, basically, like a hamburger texture. So you want to mash those guys together. Now, if you don't have a potato masher, a fork works just as fine. I, I've only used this masher now twice making these. Beforehand, I was using a fork, so it's good either way you're perfectly capable of mashing lentils with a fork okay so if you are past the mashing point you can go ahead and pull out the one cup of vital wheat gluten and the one cup of breadcrumbs they've so nicely, all you folks who did this, packaging these, thank you so much. Um, so you can go ahead and get those to a texture that you like. Um, I'm gonna mash just a little bit more. So you might've had a head start on mashing. Um, again, I'd invite you to start thinking if you haven't, what maybe other things you wanna prepare alongside this for your meal. 
Um, if you're just joining, I'm going to have some mashed potatoes because I love mashed potatoes and gravy. Uh, and I'll have a salad. So. So now we're going to start taking about a week gluten, the breadcrumbs, your, um, you should have vegetable broth. So you need a half cup of vegetable broth. Um, your soy sauce from a few recipes ago, you'll want to pull that out. And then salt and pepper and olive oil if you don't have that. So go ahead and start getting those things together because we're going to put those all into the pot. Now, <clears throat> the recipe doesn't call for it, but if you've ever heard of it, it's an amazing ingredient. It's called uh, liquid smoke. Now, if you really want to give these like a smoky flavor, you can add a tablespoon or half a tablespoon of that to uh, this, and it will certainly, oops, I need to measure it, it will definitely give it a, uh, a nice smoky texture and taste because the texture is great anyway, but the taste is smoky for sure. Okay. Some liquid smoke. Oh, there you go. Yep, I'll share it with you over the screen. It's called Woodland Natural Hickory Liquid Smoke Flavor. And where did you pick that up, if I can ask? know if I got it on Sobeys. I don't shop in very rarefied places. So uh, yeah, I mentioned that because I think the place only place I could find it was a, a meat shop like a butcher. It wasn't in uh, Zares or one of the bigger stores. So at least I haven't found it there. So um, okay, it might even have been uh, uh, so you said a tablespoon. What's that? Did you say a tablespoon? Oh, you're putting in, oops, sorry. Or a, a teaspoon. Oh, you can put in, I would put in half a, half a, uh, a, a tablespoon or a teaspoon just in, in there, in that range, whatever you, you feel, or maybe just a couple of drops. It is very strong, the, the flavor is very strong. So if you're um, you know, familiar with that, just be mindful of it. So in any case, um, that's for liquid smoke if you're putting that in. Um, half a cup of vegetable broth, quarter uh, teaspoon of, or I'm sorry, a quarter cup of soy sauce, your breadcrumbs, vital wheat gluten that we're all in one bag, salt and pepper and olive oil should all be going into this bowl with your uh, mix right now. Then you're going to knead it with your hands. So you're going to get a little, um, a little dirty for sure. Who's got help needing? Is there any uh, extra hands in the help, uh, in the kitchen, or is it just the chefs I see on the screen? Oh, there we go. Looking good. Love it. I think that's his favorite part: is getting his hands in there, <laughs> kneading it. Definitely, up. definitely. I mean, and if you want, you can eat it. It's not going to kill you, so you can give it a, a taste now too. <laughs> I can really smell that liquid smoke in here. Oh, great. Yeah, it's, I'm out of it. Otherwise, I would put it in too. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't put in a whole tablespoon. No, no, you don't need a whole tablespoon. 
yeah, half a tablespoon or a um, teaspoon, that'll be plenty for sure. So by default, you, know, you can't really go wrong while you're kneading this. It'll start to um, become one ball and it'll come together pretty well. So I haven't been kneading it very long and that's what I have here. So I'll show everybody on screen. So now the next thing is to get, you should actually, I'm sorry, we should have started with making sure the oven, if you're gonna put them in the oven to bake them for texture. I particularly like the oven method because um, as far as when I add the gravy, the gravy seems to tenderize it. And if it's baked in the oven, it's a little more um, chewy. It gives it some dimension. So you have like a, a liquid texture with a bit of uh, crispiness and chewiness on the inside. So that's why I go with the baking option. But there is the other option where we can just fry them in the pan. And I've done that too. They're just a little more um, tender, like a, a raw piece of steak, basically. You're going to think of it for me. So what uh, what temperature the oven? You're going to set it at 425. 425. And I'm going to do that right now as well. Okay. The recipe also mentions using a cast iron skillet. I will use one for the sake of this um, demonstration, but up until this point, I haven't had a cast iron skillet. So you don't need one to do all the other things that we uh, will accomplish when we work on the gravy. So no pressure there either. Okay. Once your ball of lentils is that, once it becomes a, a, a solid ball, get yourself a baking sheet with either some parchment paper or you can either put some oil down, make sure it's nonstick. That's what we're looking for. So go ahead and get a pan. I've already got mine out. Anybody want to show off their current form of uh, the patties? Oh, that's a nice one, Lynn. There we go. You got something for us, Sandy? No, not yet. Okay. I just, there was a package of sage and something, but that goes in the gravy, not the... Correct, correct. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah, I've forgotten something. <laughs> no, no. Nobody's forgotten anything. So just to, we'll recap while, while uh, we're finishing up here before we go into making these actual patties. The vital wheat gluten, breadcrumbs, uh, salt, pepper, half a cup of vegetable broth, quarter cup of soy sauce, and one teaspoon of olive oil should all be inside of this. And by default, you're gonna get to this size. Now, start breaking those off into large, I mean, fa fairly large, I would say like at least a golf ball size. Yeah, it looks, that looks good, Sandy. At, le at least start. That's pretty big. That's, what, that's okay than... too, as long as they're all the same size. You just wanna make sure they're all the same size. You can go with big, you can go with small. Um, I think, again, it is a little bit bigger than a golf ball. So here, I'll show you guys what. Okay. If I, I had any. Small. So that's what I'm looking at. It is a little bit bigger than a golf ball, but um, okay. again, I'm gonna pre-roll these, make these into balls and get them onto my pan. And your oven is either at 425 or it should be getting there. So make sure you've done that. Let's see if I can pull this aside. Now, what's really fun about what we're making is if you like it, you can package these into pre uh, vacuum sealed or some type of other method and freeze them for a later use. So I've done that before where I've made maybe two or three batches of this while I'm making one meal. And then I uh, freeze a portion of it 
and just wait until I'm ready to make the gravy. I'll always make the gravy fresh, but I will wait until um, I'm ready to have it again to pull out one of these already frozen pre-made patties. And then I'll uh, just heat that up in the oven and make the gravy while it's going on. So that is one thing to consider if you really like these. So I got six equal size patties when I um, made my balls. So now I'm gonna roll those out, or not roll them, but I'm gonna smash them out into patty size, like hamburger size patties. And I'll show you guys that when I'm finished here. That's what I got. If you have that liquid smoke in it, or if there's um, any kind of, I've used uh, a different type of soy sauce that's had a darker, richer texture to it. It can change the way that these patties, um, the color of them, the way they look. But at the end of the day, they have the same texture. The colors may look different. Um, the flavors may be slightly uh, unique based on what kind of salt level and pepper level you want or soy sauce. Now they're not all exactly the same size, which is perfectly fine. You know, the, the, the fact is that nature has a lot of various patterns and they all look the same, but me, none of them are ever exactly the same. So that's what's really nice about what we're doing is we're making a pattern, but they don't have to all be the same. So again, I got this, I'm gonna stick it in my oven because um, it is, pretty close to being ready. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get that started in there and start setting up for making the gravy. So you guys continue and I'm gonna watch while you guys uh, finish up there making those patties. Now this is in the oven for, um, between 20 and 30 minutes. So we're just gonna keep an eye on it while we're, um, once we've started. So I'm gonna set my clock for 22 minutes. I think that's a pretty safe bet there. Okay. So I'm gonna start by cutting up my garlic. This is for the gravy. We're gonna, there's a bit of a, a method here when it comes to cooking the butter with the flour to make a roux. And that's a, a, a really fantastic thing. Once, once you've learned this recipe, I, I invite you to start thinking about how you can just make this recipe uh, for any type of gravy, for the holidays, whenever. Um, my mom knows how much I love gravy and to think that I've come across this recipe that's so accessible, so easy to make. Um, I would seriously invite you guys to uh, expand on that, find different things, share them with me if you come up with a different recipe. But what we're about to do is super accessible and fun to make. So working on gravy right now. I'm going to start by peeling my garlic. It's, it says three garlic cloves chopped. So Whatever you like, uh, please add three or less or more. I like a more earthy kind of flavor to this gravy. So I'm gonna put in probably five to six garlic cloves. Um, and again, the other spices that we have in this are sage and thyme. If you have maybe some fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, um, those earthy, herbs, you could put those into this gravy and it would uh, really elevate what you have. Um, I like it, so I might throw in some of that stuff, but I don't know all the time what kind of herbs I have. So in this instance, I think I have some rosemary, so I will put a little bit in there. We already have the sage dried and... Um... Oh, the times already 
dried in that package as well. So anyway, right now you should be getting your garlic cloves ready. It should be chopped and uh, you're using anywhere between three, I'm gonna use six. Does anybody know what's being grown at the grow center right now? Is that garlic that's out front? Yes, the, it's got, garlic is growing there. Yes. And then okay. we're waiting. We're waiting for someone else to plant more stuff. So. <laughs> hint, hint. Yeah, that sounds exciting. <laughs> I was. Um, I would. I mean. Most of you folks are uh, doing such a great job uh, supporting that center during Saturdays. But one of the things I started to do that I realized was like, why, why not? Is just pulling up the weeds. Like when you're sitting in line, we should just, you know, it's uh, multifunctional. <laughs> great, and it's very therapeutic, right? Pulling weeds. Yeah, it's like, well, that's nice. So. But yeah, the, gar the garlic is looking really great. That's why I was curious to know if it was, I kind of thought maybe it was onion and then I just, at the end of the day, didn't know, so. When was that planted? Do you know, Pam? Yeah, it was planted last fall. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we are looking to put together a group um, to take over the gardening at Grow. So if anyone is interested here on this call, um, we received some seeds. Um, so it'd be really just about uh, growing it and kind of tending to it with a, a group of people. Uh, we have many volunteers that are happy to help, but I just need someone to kind of, you know, take the lead. Intent. <laughs> Okay, so if anybody's listening, if anybody's interested, if uh, we should all get together and do that, um, you heard it from Pam. That sounds great. <laughs> Who's laughing? Would I hear John laughing? <laughs> Couldn't quite mute that fast enough. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so make sure you're chopping this up. Uh, your garlics, there. My my oven has finally uh, finished preheating, so hopefully, if you haven't put your patties in, and again, your I got mine in for 22 minutes. You're just keeping an eye. There's nothing that's gonna hurt you inside that patty, so it doesn't matter if it's undercooked. You're really looking for texture. So for me, I like the outside crispy, so I'm just gonna watch for the crispiness to start to form, and then I'll take it out of the oven. We're gonna set it aside. And while we're making our gravy, um, part of the process is actually frying those patties so that we get a little bit of the patty in the pan before we move on with getting the garlic and the mushrooms and the other stuff going. So that's why we got those in right now. So go ahead and chop up your garlic, get your mushrooms sliced. I know one of the things that, uh, speaking of gardening, it's like there's a, a the with the weather changing so fast, you can see everybody's now buzzing around working on their gardens, and it's it's great to see. Um, and I'm one of those folks, so like, you know, it's it's just nice to be able to go out there and do that. And eventually, I, I don't know if anybody's put anything in the ground yet, um, but if you are, I'd be interested to hear what you're position is on that. I, I kind of want to put my stuff out, but I'm still a little skeptical. It's just not, for me at least, I want it to be a few degrees warmer at night, but I'd be interested in hearing other people's position right now. We, we started putting out some beans 
uh, just because the kids were anxious to do something. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed and see if they'll, if they'll take. There we go, nice. Uh, Cal's uh, dill is up about two or three inches. The carrots are up, the peas are up, the beets, the carrots. Uh, there's a whole lot of green out here. Squirrel's got my carrots. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> We're waiting wow. for the turkeys to wipe everything out. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so now is um, everybody got their mushrooms sliced? Okay, and your garlic is chopped, I understand. Great. So I'm the one lagging at this moment. But that's okay. Go ahead and um, set my, again, I started some stuff earlier for dinner. If you have a cast iron skillet, you can put that on the burner now. If you don't, no worries. Use any frying pan. It's perfectly fine. Um, so go ahead and put that onto the stove. Start getting that warm. Um, the heat that you want, I would, if you are using a cast iron because it's harder to cool a cast iron once it's started to get warm, start off on a low heat until we're ready to pull out our um, patties because again, what we're going to be doing is putting the patty into the pan, frying the patties, taking the patties out, setting them aside, and then we're gonna start with the garlic and the mushrooms. And we're gonna saute those inside the pan that just had the patties in them. So depending on what your timing is in the oven, if you've gone that route, um, if not, maybe if you haven't gone through the oven, raise your hand, let me know, and then I can help you and guide you through the next step. But most of us, I believe, have their steaks in the oven. So just let me know if you need uh, guidance on the next steps. So we're just waiting at this point for, I got about 12 minutes. Yep, they're looking pretty tasty. So I'm just waiting there. And again, the uh, mushrooms, I'm gonna start slicing mine. If you have other herbs that you wanna put into the gravy, you can start getting those ready while you're waiting. Um, and I guess the other bits are getting the rest of your meal together. I'm gonna to have some mashed potatoes with the gravy and I'm gonna get an arugula salad. Um, and I'll show you guys how to make a really quick dressing. It's uh, just, honey, I put some soy sauce in it, olive oil, and uh, shake that up. It's for, and some lemons actually, lemon juice. So it's pretty easy, but that's what I'll use on my salad. So in any event, I'm getting my herbs that I'm gonna use and get my mushrooms sliced. And I have about 10 minutes before I uh, will check and see where those patties are. So uh, if we wanna take a moment and stop the recording, we can do that for, 10 minutes or so, Maya? Sure, we could totally do that. Yeah, because I, I think that's about where we're at, right? Anybody yeah. else need any guidance that, um, is that a pause or questionable point? Just let me know. But right now I, I'm getting herbs ready. Okay, I, I need help. I uh, sliced my mushrooms and I started to saute them, but now I took them out of the pan what should I be doing with the garlic? Putting it with the mushrooms? Yeah, if you've already sauteed the mushrooms, just saute the garlic and set it aside as well. But everybody else, if you haven't done it yet, saute the mushrooms and the garlic together. Okay. You're gonna be okay. It, it's, it's just a few minutes, like because you only have the um, garlic in the pan when my experience, if I've just, if I've only done garlic, because I have done that before, if I'm only doing garlic, it cooks pretty quick. So you only need on with oil, you only need a few moments. So 60 seconds, maybe with chopped garlic like this, no more, otherwise it'll become burnt. So just keep in mind if you are um, 
your can's too hot, the garlic, because of the size, I'll, I'll bring it up at least show you what my side of this, because of the size of the garlic, if that oil is too hot, it will burn quite quickly. So just be mindful of that. Um, so again, that's, that's why for me, if I'm putting it in with a mushroom, there's a lot of moisture inside a mushroom. So to, it can cook a little bit longer. I don't have to watch it as um, steadily. So, or be as vigilant when I'm cooking just the garlic. So anyway, I'm gonna get back to cutting my mushrooms. So I'll slice those. So is it okay if I do the pause now? Yes, yes. At the end, the gravy is a layer that's gonna keep the dish warm. So even though we're setting the stuff aside, that's okay, don't worry about it, trying, trying to keep it at a certain temperature because you're just cooking it right now to texture. Keep that um, in play there. Now, if you are fortunate enough that you have one person in your home or you're a little less fortunate that you have two, but if you're really unfortunate, you have more than that, um, you're gonna run out of patties pretty quick if you went with the recipe. <laughs> so um, I would like to hear the dialogue at the dinner table after all the patties are gone, if anybody can share that with me um, at the center this coming week, that'd be great or in a message, that'd be even better. But um, yeah, I would be surprised if nobody at the house that eats them doesn't want another one or more. So um, I'll show you guys what my patties look like. I'm going to take my first batch off the pan in just a minute. But that's kind of what they look like. Uh, and I, again, I'm only frying them for a minute, two minutes on each side, somewhere in there. So I'm just getting that look, that texture of it, okay? And then once you've uh, finished sauteing all these things, the patties and the mushrooms, the garlic, you need to bring that heat that's in the pan down. It needs to come to like a, um, we should be at like a medium heat, medium high heat right now. You need to come down to a low to low medium heat because when we go into making this roux, if you're at a really high heat, what happens first is the butter that you're using will evaporate, so it'll burn off really quickly. And then when we put the flour in, what's gonna happen is it'll bake really quick, it'll coagulate, it'll start to become little pockets of fluff. So make sure that you, you find a, uh, a space between low heat and medium heat, somewhere in there, because we, we do, when you put the butter in the pan, you do want it to melt, but you don't want it to burn. So keep that in mind. I'm rounding the bend with uh, the final turn of the patties. So I'm gonna put those in the pan. And again, um, set them aside because I'm getting ready to do my mushrooms and the chopped garlic. 
garlic. So you can go ahead and get that stuff. So got that stuff there for us to see. If you did put, if you did make herbs like I did, at this time I'm going to put those herbs in because if they are raw, there's a bit of texture that needs to cook. So I'm going to put those in with my garlic and with the mushrooms. So that's what I'm going to do. Do that any minute now. Actually, pull these off. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Making sure I have oil in the pan before I put my garlic, mushrooms, all that stuff in the saute. Okay, so while we're letting all of this stuff cook, I'm, I'm just giving some tips along the way. One of the things that I've learned or experienced is the recipe asks for two cups of vegetable broth, and two cups is for sure the minimum that you want to go. If you find that it's a little thick, you'll know right away. So add a little bit more vegetable broth. Um, I personally like to start with a little bit more than two cups and then cook it off and let it reduce a little bit. But that's just because I like the flavor of the, uh, the gravy being a little more um, fine, not as thick. So you can, you can do it however you want, but for sure, you're going to want at least two cups of the vegetable broth and just keep an eye on it. If it starts to look like it's getting really thick, just add more of the broth. But I'm not there yet as far as uh, cooking the roux. Great, so we're for you guys to see. So that's what I got going in my pan. The uh, mushrooms, garlic, and those added herbs of thyme and rosemary. You're also going to get your dry sage and thyme, so you should have that um, in that little bag because you're going to get ready to put that in while we're getting the roux together. When we put the broth, the vegetable stock, you're going to put this baggie in of herbs. So get that stuff together. And I'm almost done with my. Uh, mushrooms, so I'm almost done sauteing. Okay. 
Yeah, make sure you guys again one last time before I get ready to take them off to eat what my mushrooms are starting to look like. So this is what I got going on with the mushrooms. If anybody's curious to see what they look like, they're still, they're not, um, completely cooked. Like they're gonna be set aside, they're gonna cook a little bit more and then we're gonna add them to gravy and they're gonna cook a little bit more too. So for me, this is the level of texture I want, but again, you can consider how you want your mushrooms to taste. So set mine aside now, put them off and get ready to make the roux. Okay, so making sure your heat is low, low, not too hot. Even right now, I know that that cast iron skillet is, uh, although it's at a low heat, um, still could be too hot for the butter I'm gonna put in. So you're gonna have three tablespoons of butter, and three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Go ahead and get those things ready. Um, so that stuff over here. I'm also gonna, I don't wanna be next to, this is a bit, um, you gotta be a little vigilant while you're making this. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Sorry, I didn't see that. Let's see, the bag of spice was, how much of each? Oh, the baggie of spice was a tablespoon of dried sage and a half a tablespoon of thyme. So that's what was in the bag if you didn't get the baggie. And again, if you didn't get um, if you didn't get something like the flour, you should have um, three tablespoons, right? Yes, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. That's what you're getting ready to do. So I'm gonna set my stuff over here to get it staged. My pan feels like it's at the right heat. So that's where I am. Anybody there got any other um, questions before we get ready to start? This will take about um, two to four minutes. So what the reason why I say that is because to make the roux, we're gonna watch it as it bakes for about 90 seconds to two minutes, and then adding the other things, whisking that all together um, should take about another two minutes there. So think about what else you may need. You got margarine, you got all purpose flour, um, measuring spoon. I'm gonna bring it, because I only have one, I'm gonna bring a little paper towel and wipe it out. Again, we're gonna start with the butter. I would recommend starting with butter. Put that in the pan as quick as possible and then adding the flour. You got your um, two cups of vegetable broth the side in the time already. So here we go. I'm going to start with my three tablespoons of butter, vegetable butter. Make sure you have a whisk too. Make sure you have that next to you. So. 
Just getting that going. I have some little pieces of garlic and uh, other things in my pan. So hopefully you guys are the benefits of that as well. Putting that aside. Now again, three tablespoons of flour one. And the best way to describe this, what it'll look like, is uh, like some brown toothpaste. It'll just it'll, it'll look after you baked it. Once you know that you baked it, um, should look like brown toothpaste. And mine is doing pretty good baking right now. You don't want it to burn, so you're going to get ready as well. While that's going on, you get ready for that vegetable stock. So I'm going to start to put my vegetable stock in the first cup. Ready. Now I'm going to pour in my cup of vegetable broth. Again, now I'm just whisking it all together. So I got one cup of vegetable broth in, and I'm whisking these things together. Now I'm going to find all these little pieces that are in there, all these baked pieces of flour. I'm gonna break them up with my whisk and go around and do that. I can see it really starting to look like one thing again. So it should have looked like toothpaste, brown toothpaste, you added the stock, you've gone around with one cup and now it's a bit of a, um, like a, a puddle, it should look like a puddle of flour. I'm gonna add my second cup of vegetable stock. Add that, get that going. And at this point you can add a little packet of seasoning that you have. We're gonna to start to slowly add the other things that you had set aside. So start with um, the last thing we made, which was the mushrooms. So you can set that into the pan once you've let this cook for a minute or two. Everybody okay on that side? Yeah, that's me in the chat. Now, as long as you successfully didn't burn your um, flour, which is okay if you did, it only take a minute to do it again. Um, you should start to see it all kind of take the form of one liquid, spices and things all coming together. And that's what I'm doing here is I'm just whisking and mixing all of these things together. We have in our box. You can bring the heat up a little bit while you're doing this so that you can get it to a point of simmering. Because then once you get to the simmer, uh, we'll get ready to drop our patties into the pan. And again, you don't have to do it that way. One way is doing it where you put the patties in the pan, and let them cook for a minute or so. The other way is just putting them on your plate, so plating them, and then pouring the gravy over top. I personally uh, go with the pouring the gravy on the top because again, I like the crispy bits. So it allows me to have the crispy edge. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. In any case, now I got my gravy. I'll bring that over to you guys actually before I put the mushrooms in. Okay. So this is what my gravy looks like. I'm gonna put my mushrooms in it now. So again, that's uh, the roux with the broth and all the spices there. I'm gonna 
drop in those already cooked mushrooms and whisk them around, get them really covered. And likewise, let the flavor that the mushrooms have go into the gravy. So that's, that's the other reason why we're doing this is making sure that the mushroom flavor is, um, or actually that the, the gravy is permeated by the mushroom. So we want, we want that uh, flavor to be impregnated into the gravy. So there we go. It up. Now, while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to finish up the other things that I have and I'm going to get my plate ready. So I would recommend you folks to do the same. Get your uh, plates if you're going to have some other side or a salad or whatever it is, get that together because I'm still letting this um, get to a point of simmering. So that's where we are. It's starting to simmer as we speak. And my gravy is simmering. So I'm going to make sure I'm stirring that so that it stick to the bottom of the pan. And that's how it go. And again, everything's at this point, we've finished the patties, the gravy's ready. I'm just getting my plate together and um, then it's time to eat. So I invite you guys to get your stuff ready as well. Okay, so like I said, I, I got my stuff um, pretty much settled here. I'm gonna add some dressing and get the gravy on, but I would like to see where everybody is. If you can share with me, show me your plates, uh, share your comments while you're chowing down if you get that chance. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take my gravy off the burner because it's done. And uh, I wanna hear from you folks, what's going on on your side? Oh, there we go. I like that, Pam. Those look, that looks delicious. Yep. Sandy, looking good? I someone to, okay. No, you got your thumb over the camera. We're trying to get here. No. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. What is it? Is that a baked potato? Baked potato and um, cabbage. That's nice. Good. Oh, that looks that good. Vegetable broth. Wow, that yeah. looks really so, good. Hardly wait to try this. Yeah, I can't wait to see. Let's see. And then what else we got? Oh, when? I added Ooh. some uh, chopped Egyptian onions to the top. The uh, patties really look like ground beef with the 
uh, liquid smoke in. They're a dark brown. Yeah. And um, I'm just going to wow my daughter when she tastes this. I, I, I know. I know. Everybody's going to be wowed. It's great. Pam, what's going on in your, at your house? Yeah, so I, I got mine here just on the plate. And I was wondering if everyone can, if we can do a screenshot again, Maya. If everyone oh, can hold it up again. Yeah, we'll I was gonna, I was gonna mention that, that everyone had a play, but I was so afraid to say it. It's <laughs> okay. If it works yeah, for no, everyone. Yeah, sounds great. Let me get my gravy on. Yeah. Oh my God, everything looks so delicious. Okay, yeah, oh, that looks great. She's waiting for a wind for a second. Did she hear us? Oh, it looks, yeah, I think she's just getting her plate because she had it, she had it in the pan, which it looks oh, delicious. okay, it looked awesome. I'm gonna show, I'll show it to the Instagram. Group. Oh, yeah. So if your mom's watching, <laughs> there we go. If any mom's watching, this is good food. So any dad's watching, really. <laughs> great stuff she says it looks pretty and looks delicious <laughs> oh, okay there we go. oh it looks so good <laughs> so i'm gonna take the screenshot one two three here we go perfect thank you awesome. everyone okay so um i'm not gonna wait i'm gonna because i don't have anybody here that i have to wait on so I'm gonna start with uh, myself and just see how it tastes. Cause again, it's always a bit of a journey, right? And one of the best parts is knowing that it turned out. Um, however it did, you learn something along the way, no matter what. So mm, the mushrooms are good. Let's get a little bit of this patty here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so good. So um, I just, what I realized today, oh, it's my refrigerator, I better go shut the door. Um, what I realized today that was really great about this platform, being able to come together, share food, is you have to make dinner anyway on a Monday night why not join and have the opportunity to create community and not worry about what you have to cook? So um, if, you, if that hasn't dawned on you, uh, I'd like to share that with some of you folks, but um, it's great that you and others are tuning in and watching what's going on. I'm so glad that we get to share great food. Um, I just wish we could share great food together, um, but we are, in other ways, whatever um, this day and age allows us to do at this point. So um, I'm grateful that I get to share this food with you. And next week, I want you to tune in as well because we're on three of five now, we finished. So join us next week because we're gonna have the uh, red risotto, red, or red ratatouille risotto, which is awesome. It's so good. You'll probably make it again if you, <laughs> haven't made other dishes twice already you'll want to make this one again and likewise this so um that's a great dish and then we're going to round out with some uh tofu bites so you got still a lot of opportunity to join in if you haven't yet or registered or you want to participate there's still time to do that so i would invite you to do so and uh pam do you got anything you want to share I agree with you, Brian. It's a great way to come together and, and be together, cook something beautiful and delicious and, and not only learn from you, Brian, but learn from everyone else and see how they've added, you know, things to it. And um, it, it's really inspirational. And I'm really, really grateful that um, you guys have been able to join us and, and share your knowledge and your, your culture and all your, your ways of eating with us. It's, it's been a lot of fun. So thanks everyone. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. I want to I say really that you've done an it. amazing job. <laughs> it looks wonderful. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, at some point we'll be able to make this stuff and share it with everybody. They don't have to just watch it, you know. So um, that that's the cool thing is this knowledge sharing, right? That's part of the, the preservation, the culture, and how traditions get passed on. So if we want to enjoy the things that we have, we should share it with everybody. So um, anyway, I appreciate the time this, this evening. It's not morning. Um, but now I get to go get my kids. So I'm gonna go do that. And um, you folks enjoy your meals, your supper in some places or dinner as we might call it here. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity to share great food, good company and uh, whatever place we are, I'm glad that we get to be together. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Brian, okay. thanks everyone. Ciao, folks. Enjoy. Bon appetit. Thanks, Brian. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thanks, Mike.